must constantly look at things in a different way. The Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast was created by two physical therapists out of the desire to learn more about the different educational roles in physical therapy and healthcare and how healthcare education works by talking with educational leaders and people with different perspectives within physical therapy and across interdisciplinary lines on how education can be improved to disrupt the status quo of healthcare education. This is our journey, and thanks for listening. Are you a third-year physical therapy student that excels on tests when you have study guides, checklists, and deadlines? With all of the information available about how to prepare for the NPTE, it's easy to get disorganized and not feel prepared going into the big day. NPTE Prep Success is an online course that provides PT students easy-to-use study guides and step-by-step guidance through the NPTE preparation. To learn more, visit kylericeprep.com. Thank you again all for your continued support, and now for the show. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Teach Me Something Tuesday here on the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Wyrock, and every Tuesday we are going over a teaching or learning tactic brought to you by one of our co-hosts or one of our guests that we've had over the last couple of seasons of this podcast. So feel free to submit any of your teaching techniques, learning tactics to the podcast. To do that, you can go to the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast.com, which is our website. Click on the Contact Us button, drop us a note, or you can reach out to us on social media at HET Podcast, or you can reach out personally to me at the Steph21 on Twitter or Instagram. Today's tip comes from a program director who talked about the first lecture that she ever delivered. And she said that she wished she would have known how much time it would take to prepare a high quality lecture during her first experience teaching and that there is so much more to it than what it seems like at first glance. And I think all of us here at the HET podcast would agree with this. We guest lecture to DPT students during the year. I know Brandon has even lectured to undergraduate students. And we understand this concept. I also understand as someone who's been a competitive public speaker and debater throughout most of my life, that there's a lot of variables that you need to consider when you're developing, in this case, a lecture or doing any kind of public speaking event. First, you have to understand your audience. What is the starting knowledge base for this class? What's the personality of the class? How engaged is this class in typical lectures? What time of day are you giving the lecture? You're going to deliver the content probably a little bit more, a little bit differently in a morning class than say a five o'clock class when a class has been in session all day. And these considerations are all going to affect the methodology of your delivery. This program director also recommends, what is the content that you're delivering? Is it dry content? Are you talking about statistics? Or is it more interactive, like measuring goniometry or doing lab-based skills? Is it um, concepts that are difficult to grasp? This is going to probably affect the information that you put up on your slides. If it's something that's a little bit more difficult to grasp, you're likely going to put more information on the slides. But if it's something that's maybe a little more interactive or um, involves a little bit more storytelling, you probably could put more pictures in the slides. Once you understand the audience and the content that you plan to deliver, it's time to craft your slides. Always remember time. A golden rule with public speaking is to never go over time. Make sure that you leave room for questions. How well do you know the content? If you are an effective lecturer, you should really know what you're talking about. So if you lack some of the background information, it's probably time to open up PubMed or crack open a textbook to just re-familiarize yourself with the topic. And if you're coming back after maybe not delivering this content for a year or so, making sure that you're updating the information so that the the information that you're delivering is the most up-to-date, most recent information that Uh, that is presented. The idea should be that you can answer most questions that the students may have or at least facilitate a discussion among students to promote critical thinking. We know in science that we're not going to have all of the answers, 
but at least helping to promote that engagement with students is a really important way to engage the audience. When crafting slides, if PowerPoint is your means of content delivery, you need to decide how much information you want to provide on the slides. I typically try to include more pictures and less words unless the content is really dense. And a lot of times I have found that students uh, that I have taught are much more engaged when, you, when I utilize pictures than if I utilize a lot of words. However, when the content is a little bit more dense, especially if I'm presenting something, let's say on policy, some type of disease, then I'll typically try to put more words on the slide. If you haven't listened to our interview with Russ Woodman, I really recommend listening to it. He gives a lot of really good tips about how to be an effective lecturer and teacher. I really like his advice on using storytelling as a way to engage the audience and really make content relatable. I think that you know when we listen to TED Talks, one of the reasons why TED Talks are so engaging is because it is a story. You have a beginning, a middle, a climax, and an end. And I think that that's a really great way, a really great structure to think about when you are crafting a lecture. And I think that is something that can be done when teaching uh, clinical, clinically relevant content because we're all gonna have patients that we can relate to and that we can utilize in our storytelling. Finally, and probably the most underweighted way to improve a lecture quality is to practice delivering the lecture. And that can be really hard when you're giving a one to three hour lecture. It can be challenging, but as my band teacher always said, practice makes perfect. So it's really a way to practice, to hone your public speaking skills and really get comfortable with material and its delivery in front of an audience. Public speaking is the number one fear of most people. And so really trying to kind of overcome that is really important. And one of the best ways to do it is through practice. If we spend the time working on this, on a high quality lecture before we give it for the first time, it's less time that we have to spend the next time we need to give a lecture. The way a teacher engages students can make a huge difference in how that, in that student loving or hating a subject or content. And as teachers, it's an extremely important job that we have to really make sure that we're delivering our topic with passion, with passion and really making sure that we are engaging our audience. That was this week's Teach Me Something Tuesday. I hope you learned something from it. If you, again, have any type of teaching techniques or learning tactics that you think would be um, good for this podcast, drop us a note on social media, and hopefully we'll see you again at the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast. Thanks for listening. Access to healthcare is one of the largest issues facing both providers and patients, as millions of people worldwide lack timely and affordable access to healthcare. Anywhere Healthcare, a telehealth platform, is a simple, low-cost option for providers and patients that eliminates the barriers to access to all kinds of healthcare. To find out more, check out anywhere.healthcare, which is available on our show notes. And if you use the code HET in all caps when you email to sign up, you'll save 25% off the total cost. Thank you for attending class today, and we hope that you learned something and gained value from the content. If you'd like to schedule office hours with us, feel free to add us on Twitter at HET Podcast, on Instagram, HET Podcast, on Facebook, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, and the homepage, healthcareeducationtransformationpodcast.com. And for those of you following along in the syllabus, extra credit can be obtained by liking us, sharing us, and leaving a review. Let's continue our journey up Mount Educational Success as lifelong learners.